for this panel. <laughs> the next one is uh, Akahiro again. But first, I introduce it, but it's very, very quick. So, yeah, next section distribute. As said, we will talk about the distribution aspect, which builds upon this build uh, aspects we just talked about. Um, and we will not talk about distribute and orchestrate, of course, that's a copy and paste error because we will talk about distribute. And yeah, um, Akahiro, it's your slide again. Here you go. I think we can just. <laughs> Hi again. Uh, uh, so OCI uh, means uh, Open Continuous Initiatives. Uh, they're uh, defining uh, specifications for uh, containers under the umbrella of uh, Linux Foundation. Uh, currently, OCI has uh, three specs uh, called OCI Runtime Specs, uh, OCI Image Spec, and OCI Distribution Spec. Uh, OCI runtime spec uh, defines how to uh, create a container uh, from uh, some JSON configuration file and uh, root the FS uh, directory. And uh, OCI image spec defines how to uh, represent uh, image layers for uh, OCI runtimes. Uh, so <coughs> the OCI runtime spec uh, just requires uh, just a plain directory. Uh, but uh, we need uh, archive for uh, creating a root FS directory. Uh, so OCI image spec uh, defines uh, how to represent uh, the root FS uh, using uh, TAZZ uh, layers. And uh, we need to distribute the, uh, these uh, image layers. Uh, so we have uh, OCI distribution spec. Uh, so uh, we can uh, distribute the, these uh, image layers uh, using uh, REST API. Uh, so all of uh, these OCI runtime spec, image spec, and distribu distribution spec are based on the uh, Docker implementation, uh, but it's now adopted by a bunch of uh, non-Docker ecosystem, uh, including uh, Podman and Cryo, and also uh, Singularity. Uh, this is an example of uh, OCI uh, image layout. Uh, so we have a JSON file for a configura configuration file. And the configuration file has uh, SHA256 uh, file name. And uh, we have uh, TARZZ uh, image layers. Uh, these image layers are created for uh, each of uh, Docker file instructions, such as uh, from instruction and run instruction. Uh, so these files uh, represent as uh, AUFS uh, changes it. Uh, it's kind of a copy on write file system. Uh, so they just uh, uh, records uh, difference across the each of Docker file instructions, and uh, we have uh, some object uh, called the manifest uh, for uh, putting the uh, config and image layers uh, into uh, a single object, and the manifest has uh, SHA 256 file name as well. Uh, so you can uh, ensure the disability of uh, Docker pull command by uh, remembering the uh, digest of this uh, SHA 256 digest. Uh, so uh, because uh, we have some kind of uh, macro tag structure for the manifest and the config file and uh, these image layers. And you can put uh, multiple manifest versions uh, into an uh, object called a uh, manifest list. And uh, manifest list uh, supports uh, much architectures uh, such as uh, AMD64 and ARM64 and PowerPC or, or S390X. And you can use a uh, build kit to uh, build uh, these much architecture images. Uh, so uh, with the build kit, uh, you can choose uh, either uh, QMU or uh, real remote machines uh, for building uh, manifest for uh, other architectures. And uh, with uh, Christian's uh, Media Hub, uh, you can also uh, put information for micro architectures such as uh, Broadwell or iStrack, and also uh, GPU architectures such as uh, Tesla M60. And so uh, you can find more information at uh, Christian's uh, website. Uh, 
and Dr. Bripo, and also uh, his presentation today. Uh, but uh, OCI Images has a bunch of uh, issues, uh, such as uh, we don't have a uh, fine granularity for uh, data duplicating uh, files inside the image, and uh, we can't uh, start continuous until uh, we finish uh, pulling the uh, image from registry. Uh, so there's an uh, alternative uh, called uh, SunBMFS, uh, developed by uh, CERN. Uh, so SunBMFS uh, supports uh, data publication of uh, images in a uh, file level uh, rather than layer level. Uh, so and also uh, the files can be uh, ready put uh, on demand uh, using FITS. Uh, so you don't need to wait uh, uh, for a certain image uh, without uh, waiting for uh, putting the image. And there's a discussion on integrating Serbian FS to continue ID. And there's also a proposal called OCI V2, uh, but uh, we don't have implementation for OCI V2, but it's uh, expected to uh, implement a much finer data application uh, granularity. And Google is uh, also working on a very similar project called the Containerless File System that focus on already uh, uh, pre existing images. And there's also a uh, similar stuff uh, called IPCS, uh, which is uh, IPFS integration for ContinuID. Uh, so you don't even need to uh, put images explicitly uh, because the all objects are shared across the ContinuID nodes uh, in the cluster uh, using IPFS or PCP storage. Thank you. Thank you. Who is next? I think it's you. And thanks for plugging my project, by the way. <laughs> so I just want to talk. It's me every, literally every time. I'll never learn. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about the singularity image format just a bit. Um, so singularity image format, or SIF, it's a single file container uh, format, and the idea here was to ensure the highest level of reproducibility and the highest level of portability of your container between systems, right? Um, I think we talked maybe already in the panel, or one of the panels, about the Squash FS being optimized a lot for uh, these HPC applications. The other thing that having it as a single file is, is really good for is the immutability. Um, con complying with controls like HIPAA or FERPA or you know whatever you're dealing with. Uh, the other thing we can do is cryptographically sign it. So what is the Singularity image format? So previously Singularity was just creating a squash FS um, and adding a little magic header block to the front of it to let, it, let Singularity know that it's a Singularity image. Um, but we took this basically a step further and extended that a little bit. So uh, this is this this image here is essentially a diagram of what a SIF file looks like. So at the top there's a header, and that basically describes what version of SIF it is, uh, the length of the file, those kinds of things. And then there is a bunch of descriptors that describe uh, separate regions of data in this one file. Um, so typically an image will have just a squash FS partition and maybe one bit of metadata about uh, the what the image was built like. So I think it just contains the recipe file. Um, but the really, really nice thing that we can do, because it's all a single file, is we can, for example, we can cryptographically sign the squash FS partition and then attach the cryptographic signature as another block in this file right at the end. And because of that, it means that that cryptographic signature is going to be moved everywhere the image goes. And so you really have a self described cryptographically signed container image at that point. Um, and something that I think is interesting to talk about too with, with this meta hub, Christian, that you've been working on, um, I think it would be really interesting to see how we could sort of add meta metadata into this image and add different partitions in the image that could somehow play together. I don't really know, you know exactly what that would look like, but you know, maybe we could start looking towards you know, multiple architecture support in SIF in that way. I think that would be really interesting to talk about. Uh, and again, you can cryptographically sign it. So this is using PGP. Uh, so what you do is you do singularity sign, 
Uh, it'll give you a prompt. It'll ask you for a username or for, for a full name. It'll ask you to you know create a PGP key if you don't have one already. Otherwise, you can you know import key material if you want to do that. Um, then when you you know if you push your your image into the cloud in some way into some registry, so you can put it into our library, or also you can now put it into OCI registries as well. That signature will be transported with it, and when you go to the other side and you've downloaded the image on a different system and you go Singularity Verify, it's going to go and it's going to find the public key material. Um, we have a little PGP key material distribution service that that you know will will ship all the public keys around. Uh, you'll be able to make sure that nobody has modified your file. That's all I wanted to talk about. All right, cool. And there's a lot to unpack for the panel, I think, for the whole thing as well. Hi, it's me again. Today or now, the fourth of the, the tools is Scopio. So Scopio is a tool for managing and distributing container images. It was actually the first of the tools in the GitHub containers family. And it started with a pull request, I'm not sure again when I think it was 2014 or maybe 15 by a colleague from Red Hat, Antonio Mordaka, who wanted to uh, or basically add a feature to inspect remote images. So when you want to inspect an image with Docker, it needs to be pulled first. But if you just want to check the configuration, the layers and things like this, that's not really necessary. But they said the, that the CLI is already complex enough. But they said, listen, a registry is just an HTTP server. So in theory, you can just curl everything. And step by step, it, the, the, it somehow evolved into uh, an entire tool for many more purposes than just remote inspection. So this is how it looks like. We can do a Scopio inspect uh, on a Docker or a remote image on some Docker registry or container registry. Fedora latest, here I deleted some data because it just didn't fit on the slide. But uh, I guess you get the idea, right? We can uh, inspect some uh, configuration and metadata, name, digests, the tags, which can be Fedora latest and such, um, the timestamp when it's being created, the architecture, and all, all the things that make up basically a container image. <coughs> but Scopio can do more. Nowadays, it's mostly used for basically copying images across different so-called transports. We can use it to copy an image from container registry A to container registry B without doing a pull, then a tag, then a push, just everything happens um, at one instance. And Scopi Scopio supports different kinds of transports. What I mean by transports is we can convert it, basically, we can explode it on the local storage, we can um, transform it or convert it into an OCI image back to a Docker one. We can explode it to OS tree and all these kinds of things. So the currently supported ones are container storage. This is basically where also a Portman pool or a builder pool will by default place them. Here supported drivers are overlay, butterfs, vfs, and all these things. We can explode it on the local file system into a directory. This is an entirely non-standardized uh, standardized format, but all the tools can use it. This can be helpful if you want to explore a little bit what's going on there. Um, some users use it to also store it on a, a USB storage, copy it in an air-gapped environment and then uh, copy it again into a, a registry from there. Docker, which is basically what Docker is using, it's uh, a remote registry, but it also supports the Docker safe format and archive, and it can only uh, also copy from a local uh, Docker daemon. And for sure, the OCI, as I've mentioned before, and OS tree. 
The nice thing about these transports is it gives a lot of flexibility. In a sense, somehow like the other tools, it tries to be very unopinionated in that sense. It works uh, rootless where possible. The Docker, when it communicates with the Docker daemon, at least when it's running as root, <coughs> it will still require uh, root access or privileges. Another feature is deleting. So you can delete an image from a remote registry, which is a very common use case. There's an open pull request also uh, to add another, another command called sync, where you can say, I want to sync an entire namespace on a registry and copy everything from A to B. Or here I have a path with a bunch of archives that I want to populate to another namespace or to a set of namespaces on a given specified set of container registries. So as I was talking at the beginning or mentioning at the beginning, the tools should be inter operable, and a uh, Podman pool or a builder pool basically boils down to a Scopio copy, which all use the image library. It's easy to integrate into the tool chains, and it's basically the same upstream. It has no dedicated IRC channel, and it's available on the same Linux distributions as the other tools. Cool, you can reuse your slides. Like it's the same, yeah. All right, cool. Um, yeah, uh, next is me. Again, so building on what uh, what I just said before, that having different images for different architectures, you need different names. That's kind of a cumbersome endeavor. Um, it, that's also a slide I showed before, right? If you want to have this, then you need different names, and you need to come up with a naming scheme that fits your actual problem. And this is for sure not lasting super long, because after one year, you will have different naming schemes or different people with different uh, opinions. So that's going to be ugly. Um, what Akahiro already showed was a manifest list. So this is kind of the JAML representation of a, of a manifest list. You have the platform object that defines which architecture and with which OS this image is for. And OS and architecture is basically what the most runtimes care about. So they will download the correct ARM or correct AMD image for Linux. Um, but in the OCI image, um, image spec, there's more. There's also a feature flag. There is an OIS feature flag that I didn't list here, but there's this feature flag, which was kicked out um, from the runtimes two years ago or two and a half years ago because it was not used. And I think my um, how I understood it is that these features were intended to be used for all the stuff that you can discover on the host. So you could go uh, start a Docker engine and then look for all the, uh, the, the CPU flags that are used and use this as a differentiation between images. But of course, since no one is as fine-grained as CPU flags, if you build an image, you need to to be very careful what uh, CPU flex to put in, so that never uh, never worked, and so it was kicked out. But you can still use it, and I patched the Docker engine to recognize these features. Um, um, had a little hack that made it possible to define such a manifest list, push it to Docker Hub, and then have the, uh, the Docker engine download the correct image. But of course, bringing this upstream was cumbersome or is still cumbersome and also it needs to be implemented by every runtime so at the end i said why well, care about runtimes and i created something i call metahub which is just a proxy in front of the registry it's basically a pull through cache that just downloads the overlaying uh, the the, f uh, the layers from the normal registry but presents itself as a yeah, a meta registry, a proxy to the engines. And how I how it's how it's done is that you can define in MetaHub, you can define different machine types. So you could say the type one is maybe the Broadwell system, this type two is Skylake, type four has a Broadwell and a Tesla M60, and create different credentials for the engine to log into MetaHub. So um, Within Metahub here, type 1 will lock in as type 1, and type 2 will lock in as type 2, so Metahub can differentiate the two hosts and can serve the correct image for this certain host. So, and this is what Metahub then presents the, the, the machine, so, or the runtime. Uh, Metahub will just trim down the manifest list we saw before and uses the features to figure out what uh, feature is used by the runtime. And since the runtime has a unique login, or the machine type has a unique login to Metahub, it will just trim down the manifest list to the one that's best for the host and different 
types, different um, machine types within MetaHub will serve different images. So if you log in with type one on the first one, you get a Broadwell image. If you log in with type two, you get a Skylink and so on. And you can also change the login before you start a job so that you have a different type that you want to run an image from. And yeah, so that's basically Basically, that you do this, log in with type one, and when you do Kneep bench, so this meta, this manifest list image, this, uh, this proxy image, it will download the correct one because it knows what runtime requires what features. And you can change this on the fly as well. And as I gave out also the, the links here, so I have a blog post explaining it. It's open source, so feel free to use it and uh, like contribute, raise issues, star it maybe. Um, so yeah, that's it. And I think this might be helpful for, for some use cases. And this, of course, could also be included in all the registries, right? So this is just an externalization of the problem, but if registry providers want to pick this up, it's open source. Cool. And now we are at the panel again. So, and the panelist, can we have 15 minutes before, um, before lunch? Yeah, please. And who else fel feels, um, as I said, the panel is not closed, so if, uh, Shane, if you want to join as well, or maybe it's not. I think I'll ask questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. And it's built and distributed. I think we can merge those two topics because they are pretty much. Maybe I'll start with the, the singularity one up. I think, you know, one of the, I can see the, the it can benefits of it having a closer. Closer. Yes. I can see the benefits of having this single image, um, uh, just because it's easier to move around and stuff like that. There are the layers in uh, the sort of standard one also have some benefits, right? And I'm just wondering, is there a way to kind of keep keep those? So one is in the build process. It's nice because. You can cache things. That's sort of in the build side, right? You could probably still have your cake and eat it too there. But then the other is there's a lot of repli duplication you probably wind up having because, you know, every we see this with Shifter, right? Every time somebody pulls another image down, even if there's a one byte change, it's another five gig image or whatever it is, right? Um, it, is there any balance there that could be achieved? Yeah. So, so that's definitely that's definitely a thing that. Um, it's a concern, right? So if you're downloading, um, you know, ten Docker files and or ten Docker images, and they only differ by just the last layer, you're going to be building ten different SIF images from that. Um, so there, I, I guess there are two perspectives. One is that you want to be building SIF um, as the productionized sort of production image that you want to run, uh, rather than sort of experimenting and playing with a bunch of different images. But the other side of that is it is possible to take a layered approach to these sort of squashed images, right? So what, what we can do is um, have you know, a main file system partition and then have potentially you know, several separate or also in the SIF um, partitions that are also SquashFS or maybe ext3 uh, and then you can put those both on a loop device and then sort of build them up on top of each other, potentially as read-only, or the top one could also be read-write for, you know, scratch or something like that. Um, the downside to doing that is, is you might run out of, like, loop devices on the host or, or something around there. Um, but, but I would say it's something that, you know, we've been looking into is, is what's the best way to utilize um, a, a quasi-layered approach in combination with the, the flattened file system. But I think important to, to explicitly point out and make people aware of is that we have two different things we talk about, right? We talk about the distribution of the layers of the images. That's where the OCI image format excels, as you said, because you have different layers that at the end are then squashed together again. So you have the benefit of multiple layers uh, when you download the image. And in a compute cluster, it looks like this, right? You say Docker run or whatever run a Docker image. It will download the image from the registry. Each engine will do the same. Then each engine will create a snapshot, which is the container file system and the JSON blob to actually run the image. And then you have the container. And 
I think it's fair to say, and um, that's uh, at least what how I understand it is that the singularity format is more of the latter. It's more of a, a snapshotting mechanism to run the container and share it amongst multiple engines in this case, right? Because you can Correct. put you can put the 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 snapshot onto the distributed file system, and this is then something that is a snapshot and also a distribution mechanism at runtime kind of thing it's it's the same thing right yeah and, and so that's also why we support the oci image format for example right is because a lot of people are using it already it does have those benefits um so it, so you know for some use cases that it does make sense to be using that i mean I, one of the things that greg likes to talk about is sort of the difference between you know th this is source code versus a compiled binary right and and I think from our perspective, the singularity image format is sort of analogous to the compiled binary version of the container that's portable, yeah. right? But in this, in this analogy, the OCI image is kind of a mixed bag because you have, it's compiled at the end. If you, when you start it, you get something that is explicit. That's something that you can reproduce all the time. But still, you have the sharing between different containers, or container file system, Im uh, file uh, container images going on, and and it's a little bit more optimized for this. But yeah, yeah so I mean, not a perfect analogy, maybe, no, but, but yeah. you know, close enough. But but what could be done, and that, that's an example that what Arkayu talked about as well. We, this images are just blobs, right? It's a it's SHA, uh, it's, it's a, a content address TARS, and if you snapshot something, it's also something that you can uh, pretty much um, reuse on multiple hosts. So at the end, what, what this efforts that Akahiro um, showed would, would maybe get to at the end is that the image blobs are stored on a container file system, uh, on a shared file system, and also the snapshots like singularity image format will also be sh stored on the f on the container on the distributed file system, so that not every engine has to download, not every node has to download and extract and mm -hmm. snapshot all the stuff. But for this to work, of course, um, the container file system needs to be read only. That's why I uh, why I propose read only read only containers, and we, we need to make sure that uh, you have shared access to stuff that can be shared, like the blobs, because they are content addressable anyway, so if I um, access it multiple times, it doesn't matter. And uh, that stuff that needs to be written to is not an overlaying file system, maybe, but it's more a volume on the host, and when the container is gone, the volume is gone. But it's just, just want to make sure that we talk about content, content which is uh, the images downloaded, and then the snapshot, which is a container file system to run the container in. And yeah. Yeah, and I mean, that's very similar to what I mean that's what CVMFS is or CERN VM file system guys are doing with their globally distributed file system um, so they they for instance they store s the singularity images on that file system and they handle the distribution and then that binary file is just available anywhere in the world that you need access to it already then yeah and that's also what IPFS is good in right IPFS provides you a SHA like a content addressable uh, path you can execute or you can you can look up for files and and it will fit for the into this to this content storing and sharing between different nodes which is as uh, the same blobs would be would be nice uh, to have this as well um, okay other I questions I had a question on the feature stuff I just so I I missed that this CPU feature flag it was in the spec at one point and disappeared. It, so did it go away primarily because it wasn't being used or because there was other other issues? I mean, my take is, and okay, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's it was introduced because it I, it was a good idea to have like hardware specific features, and the yeah. spec says that it's. It should be usable for other features in the future, so it was not really specified. It was like a, a, a placeholder for future use. Yeah. But I think that coming up with with a, with naming that is global and it's used by everyone, that was very hard. Yeah, and, there's and an ontology problem that you have to sort of solve. Yeah, and, right? and the idea, at least what I what I understood is that the engine should figure out what the hardware is that it's running on and that is populated by the engine, same as it is populated, the, the OS and the architecture is also populated by the engine. And it's hard to come up with a generic way, which is also special for certain edge cases, to populate this feature thing. And I think that's why it was dropped, because it was just not manageable uh, at the end. And I think that's why I think this meetup, it should be like on the 
the, the sites or the user or the community should decide on what the naming is. And then once we have a, a experience and we well, I mean next year meet here and people um, tell what they what they were using as a feature and then we maybe you can come up with a naming scheme that is usable and then make it more standard again. But I think first we need experience, like practical experience with this, otherwise we cannot come up with uh, something out of thin air. We need to experience it and then do it. So what is the best practice today? So for example, CJ, what do you guys do when you create variations of the same container image? Do you, do you put the variation in the name um, of yeah. the image? Is that where it goes? Uh, the So far, nobody's gotten hit in the head. Uh, so there are, there are a couple things. Uh, we use the, the standard Docker tagging mechanism, which is one of the reasons why we like the Docker format uh, for uh, some of the tagging that goes along with what's your OS flavor and these kinds of things, right? Um, the One of the things that we do tend to do is within a given image, uh, we make it retargetable between the Pascal version and the Volta version. And this is an example of something that uh, we'll often deal with having a single entry point, but that an entry point script will go and fix up the paths or whatever uh, to do the right thing. And it turns out that uh, our experience has been that the impact on the container size for having those two versions, if the, you need that, is really small and it's in the noise. Um, I think it's a lot harder, although it's theoretically possible that somebody could get something that could uh, target a whole variety of different target architectures like ARM, Power, whatever, x86, all in the same container. You could do that. Um, we've looked at the possibility of using multiple entry points for this, but those are fragile enough that we kind of don't, that's not really what we recommend. We thought about recommending that, but that's not where we're at today. Does that address your question? And it also, I mean, th the problem is not only running it at the end, right? If you want to build something on top of an image that is distributed by, by you, or yes. then you need to be explicit in the from tag, in the from, uh, from yes. um, part to, to know what you want to run on. And that's also where this could help as well, because you would put it to the engine to, to define what is the target that the engine wants to build on. So you say, okay, this engine runs, uh, wants to build uh, board rail images. And in the from tag, you just say from Ubuntu and MetaHub will provide you with the Ubuntu image that's maybe optimized for broad rail. And in, in each iteration of the build step, you will get the image that the engine it's defined, uh, is, is has specified in MetaHub to, to download. Otherwise, you will have from Ubuntu and it will download the x86 Ubuntu image and that's it. Right. Can so I, I get the... Sorry, guys. I, I get the... Uh, maybe just to follow up on this. Um, I get that you can do this with your cool mechanism, Christian, um, in sort of the way that you build it with this. Um, I had thought of, frankly, the case of that you just brought up of where you have a container which has effectively multiple targets inside it as differentiated by your entry script, where you're going to go and build that you know, other layers on top of that as to how well that works. Has anybody here one, care about that case, and two, in, in practice, and two, uh, have worked through solutions for that? I think I would flat out everything. I mean, it, it's, it, it, the way we are doing it now works currently, I think, but once we, thought, uh, once we, we get more into image lifecycle and how you set up CICD in a sane way in order to create those multiple target platforms, then we need to sanitize it a little bit, and I think, in my opinion, we need to sanitize it so that we that we create multiple streams of build processes or build stages that then optimize for a certain architecture and not have one big image that is pushed through the whole uh, image pipeline. I think <coughs> we the need to. I don't disagree, but just to create to list an, an alternative to that, it is conceivable also that. Uh, you could carry forward through the lower layers, the lower base layers, the multiple targets, and keep uh, sort of copying out of those as lower base layers just the stuff you need and not copying the entry point script. And then you know keep those as parallel tracks and whatever your final layer is for your image, that's the point at which you pick those things. Yeah. But then the problem with that obviously is that all later layers need to know 
a lot about the anatomy of the earlier base layers, yeah, and, and that's you, awkward. And what you, what you, if you, if you do a multi-stage and you copy from another stage, then as you said, you lose all the metadata of the f of the previous stage, right? You don't have this tree of um, the 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 tr traceability of the of the content of the of the image because you just copy it in from different images, and it, then it's just <laughs> you, an, you need an to know what you're doing. Yeah. That's, but that's true for a lot of things. Yeah, yeah but of course, but yeah, you need to know it, what you're doing. But it may be appropriate to have, a, I'm, I'm not, not going to tilt at the windmill of codifying some way of doing that, but it's, it's, an, it's a call to us as uh, a registry, maybe to others too, that are offering things as base layers to others. This may be one of the kinds of things that we want to include in the readme documentation with base layers in terms of uh, that are commonly being used in these ways and in, in layered ways is to here's what's going on and here's some recommendations as to how that can be effectively layered. Yeah. And it's not exclusive, right? If you have this meta, this, this manifest list, you could have the normal way is as the, as the image that is used by any other um, runtime or any other OCI um, yeah, client to this legacy and then you have more images in a manifest list with features which are only recognized by clients, runtimes, meta hub that r are able to recognize the feature set. So it's not exclusive, right? We can do both ways. We can go the normal way, the standard way as a default. And then if you understand features in the manifest list, then you can use the features in the manifest list. It's either the runtime or a proxy. Uh, so I have a question for you about the meta hub. Is that not... You know, I'm not sure the answer to that. Is that not kind of a scary thing, though, that we're asking for a particular image and then receiving potentially multiple different images just depending on where we are? Like, it seems like we're hiding away some kind of important detail from the user there behind, you know, a hidden wall, right? Is that scary for reproducibility, for verifiability, for trust of your image? I mean, you can sign the image the actual image that is then downloaded, so the, the manifest, like the image itself can be signed, and this manifest list is just an index or like a description of this is the platform, this is the image you use, so, and, and, and it can be, I mean, you can all sign all the individual images and verify that it's signed by the correct, correct uh, creator. Get out of steam or something like that. Yeah, or I mean, or it could be serving up. You know, I mean, you're saying I want Ubuntu 18.04, but you, it could be serving up Ubuntu 16.04 and telling you it's 18.04. Like, that's that's where I'm still trying to piece together that yeah, story in no, my mind. I guess. You of know, course. You know. And this, I mean, we, we should go to lunch. But uh, of course, there is a certain person, portion. I think the features list is maybe something that is more curated by the interf uh, by the uh, infrastructure guys or the operations guys of a special site. And the uh, version, like the, the version of the software, like if it's Ubuntu, then it's Ubuntu.18.04. That's more a tag within the actual image name. So you wouldn't still have TensorFlow column 1.12 for the application you are searching for. But the f and the features will just describe different microarchitectures or different yeah, aspects but of the, the whole. But it's still serving yeah, you fundamentally different images, right? But it's true as of today, right? I mean, yeah. I can serve you uh, something else and just tag it with a different name, use Scopio, and 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 tag it with a different name. And I so for for this use case, I always recommend pulling by digest because yeah. then yeah. you really you really get what you want. And, and this point no, 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 of course, because the digest is specific to an image, actual image, mm -hmm. and uh, the manifest list lists that it's not specifying the actual image, but just the name that you want to retrieve. Yeah. But, but of course, I mean, that's, uh, that's something that we need to discuss, and that's something that's, but that's, I think, something that was worthwhile to discuss and uh, worthwhile to explore. And maybe for next year, then have a conclusion, or like the first version of a conclusion, maybe. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I think we need to to drop out and have lunch and we will be back at two <coughs> having yeah, talk about what is this the next topic distribute no orchestrate <coughs> all right, uh, yeah, right. right.